cigarette, you can ask questions or I'll allow my cigarette. It's in the crowd, the magic dust, everything you love is going to rust. When you go to a community as a youth worker, at one level, your job is really simple, like you might be just, you know, supplying basketball equipment or football equipment, or you might be putting on, you know, movies through a DVD player and a video projector, or, you know, putting on discs or an iPod to, to amplify through for a disco night or something. I've been doing holiday programs for a while, which is going out to bush, bush communities and um, doing, you know, sort of skill development and, and songwriting, recording, filmmaking and getting them to tell their stories out there. Um, but it was also, a lot of it was just sort of holiday and diversion and giving them something to do because there's nothing to do out there. It's a very remote. Um, and you know, that mixes up, you know, sometimes you make pancakes for breakfast with them and you do a bit of like the holistic kind of lifestyle stuff. Um. It's helping set up the internet and printers and computers in the community centre there and um, helping then to run youth nights uh, with just sort of basic learning how to use the internet, uh, things like Google Maps so they can trace their country and show me where they're from, and also YouTube clips, setting up emails, social networking, all that kind of thing. and doing creative stuff outside and I'll, you know I'm really outsourced recreational based therapy model do camping and we'll talk and it's an intensive intervention but let's go let's go outside let's go four wheeling let's you know out here is great I mean you've got the desert it's huge As it says drummer tool program so we do rhythm based drumming music workshops in um, schools in Alice Springs and we also run uh, we have a performance group that comes out of that called Drummer Talk and that does 60 odd shows a year but uh, really it's set up to introduce kids as an early intervention program, um, uh, the basics of rhythms and, uh, and to be able to explore. <laughs> There are whole communities where the youth don't go to school, often because the material at school isn't culturally appropriate and not even in the right language. Um, and giving something for kids to do that hopefully will provide some sort of alternative education for them. Well, that's, that's actually quite a good icebreaker. It's, it's quite hard to sit down with somebody who's very different from you and just chat about the weather. Yeah. You know, it's really, it's, a, it's an awkward conversation, but if you've got a something that you're doing together, it becomes a much more purposeful and engaging relationship. But the idea was to sort of try and set up some facilities here, because they've got computers and internet and garage and things like that, teach them to give, to, to make maybe how-to DVDs and things like that, so that even as influxes of different mob come out here, they can start actually learning skills and channeling the stuff that they have been going through you know because a lot of the reasons people are out here in the first place is their life's pretty hardcore you know and they've got a lot of stuff that they're dealing with and a lot of the reasons why they're the way they are and why they're in trouble so I think and for me I've always thought that the arts is a brilliant way of giving a platform to share that and get the message across and learn skills at the same time and also give that story out. A lot of youth programs tend to focus on a particular issue like, you know, grog or petrol sniffing and they will produce a song or a dance to send a message across in a youth-friendly manner. stuff takes place when you go out bush with people you might go out bush 
collecting bush tucker and hunting or collecting firewood and those provide that provides opportunities for adventure and provides opportunities for um, for cultural learning and 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 those experiences bond you you know you might go out to a place collecting firewood and honey ants with some people and you might think the firewood's really boring and you know it ends up all piled on the roof rack of your car and your car ends up really dirty because you've got all these billy cans full of dirt and honey ants in them but you've learnt something and then on the way back as you're driving on the way back you'll get a flat tyre and the jack won't work so someone will have to use a log to lift up your car and you'll go through that experience but then people will talk to you about it weeks and months and even years later oh do you remember that time we went out to get those honey ants and your lifter your jack wouldn't work and we had to walk you know five <laughs> kilometers to unbug someone for another jack or you know so you have an adventure and you have a bonding experience and that can be really valuable it's interesting a lot of girls were showing an amazing interest in this thing because they weren't really getting that access the boys and the men would get often dominate the musical stuff out bush or on communities or you didn't see many girls doing it. So you need to when you go to a place like that have a have a very open mind. It takes a certain person to try and affect that change. Someone with a lot of flexibility, a lot of commitment, and a lot of fun. The on the job training is the, the only is the way to do it. Yep. But you can get qualifications. I did a, um, mm -hmm. I did a um, diploma in community services and youth work, but that was to kickstart my social work degree. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. Piano, piano lessons, and um, which for me covered a broad range of stuff like also singing and writing your own songs and producing little EPs and stuff like that, which was pretty cool. Um, and a friend of mine um, was going to go out with this organisation, MPY Women's Council, um, to do youth work in the holiday program. For them at the time it was for nutrition and health. Uh, and they wanted to get um, some songwriters to go out there and work with the kids to make some songs on to tie in the, the nutrition program as a, as a youth program? Well, it's something I've done all my life, so music's been a part of my life since I was eight years old, and um, it's drumming has. And when I first came, I didn't have any idea about communities or anything, because yeah. I had no idea, and I learned the hard way, you know. The best thing is, if it's through Kalis or any place like that, or Tungandjira Youth Services, well, they're going to get really strong mentoring. Um, from people there that have already had a lot of experience working out bush and we'll be able to tell them um, about protocols of working with Indigenous people on uh, in remote communities. So did you have a mentor, do you think? No, I didn't. No, that's why I just kept tripping over myself. I, I did have mentors. I had really strong Aboriginal people on the camps and I had people that I worked with who were Aboriginal people, even though I was like a coordinator and supervisor of these programs early on. Uh, I had great staff alongside me who would you know, tap me on the shoulder every now and again and go, hang on a minute, you're going too far, Lawson. You have his time walking down this line, no crooked from preservatives of life. You have what you have. <laughs> Working predominantly around um, highly disadvantaged young people who are either disengaged from school or at risk of disengaging and who are homeless and multiple issues. It's a challenge to engage with non-engaging client group. And a lot of these kids have this attitude, um, this real sort of, to me it seems like a lack of motivation. But it must, might also be for these kids, there's these people who come in, are really enthusiastic and then get burnt out. And I don't know, maybe the kids blame themselves for that. I'm 
been so jaded and corrupted by the world, you know, and, and, and you know, the older people, not to say they're bitter, but they're, you know, they're well set in their ways, they're entrenched, and, you know, young people, sometimes it's easier to be persuasive and, you know, maybe make some changes. It's, it's almost like they have been unblemished from white society's complete corruption. You know, so you know how little kids are going to live with, and they'll play with anybody and they're free. And then when you go into your teens, become quite reclusive and you're, you know, what do they want and all that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you get older and you're just ruined. You know, you are. Well, white people, it's like, you know, someone would come up to you on the street to ask you for directions and you'd be like, you know, some rant and you'd be like, oh my God, what do they want? What do you want from me? You know, like.